Well, a man who never looks bad joins us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline on 97.3 ESPN. He is Brandon Robinson. You can follow him on Twitter at Scoop B, the NBA Underground Insider for all your news and scoops. He had that great scoop last night on the latest on the Kyrie Irving front, and he joins us here on 97.3 ESPN. Brandon, how you doing on this holiday eve? I'm happy. Happy holidays, y'all. Happy holidays. So, we got to talk about the Sixers because, you know, they're on prime time afternoon, Christmas Day tomorrow. They're going against the Bucks, And I mentioned this to Tom Rinaldi earlier. I want to ask you as well. I feel like with this basketball team, with all the talent that they have, we like to get an outside perspective on the team because a lot of times, you know, those of us who are watching the team every day, those of us who are talking to the beat guys, you know, we have one perspective. But from people who cover the league, cover sports, who are not, you know, only watching the Sixers, I want to know from you, what is your perspective overall on this Philadelphia 76ers basketball team? I think that the 76ers, uh, have some names on the roster, uh, but those names haven't uh, pinned rather than they, – they have it pinned. Uh, they've penciled their name into fifth place. Um, and by that, I mean this. Uh, you look at a lot of experts who believe that the 76ers were going to be, you know, this, this championship team, and they, really, they may still be that team. But uh, I think anything that says NBA Eastern Conference right now, it, it's the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and when you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, I think they're missing something. Um, and I've gone on your show over the summer and said that, you know, free agency might be something that may come back to haunt them in the sense of they weren't able to retain Jimmy Butler, J.J. Redick, um, and, and they need some premium shooting and they need a secondary, you know, a star. And so I think 22-10 and 10 is not a bad look. Um, but nobody thought the Miami Heat were going to be this good, and many people didn't believe that the Raptors would still be consistent without – uh, Kawhi Leonard, who went to greener pastures in Los Angeles. Um, so I think the Sixers are in fifth place in, in the quarter of the season. And um, we'll see what happens when they play against the league or the conference leader in the Milwaukee Bucks, who are currently 27-4. and four. Do you feel like what they're missing is just shooting, or is there more there? Like, is, is there is there more there in the fact that, you know, whether it's chemistry, whether it's coaching, whether it's, you know, dynamics of guys still learning how to play together. You know, we saw Tobias Harris have a huge game last night, but he has this season up and down all year long. Great game, mediocre game. Great game, mediocre game. Same thing with Ben Simmons. Joel Embiid needs to be called out by, you know, Shaq and Chuck in order for him to start exploding. Do you think there is something else missing from this basketball team that isn't just on in terms of adding to the roster in terms of players? I think it's a combination of everything you may have said, but I'll add, I think sometimes um, we want that Cornish hen so bad, but it's got to marinate in the sauce before we put it in the oven. That's my Christmas reference for the day. <laughs> uh, you, <laughs> you know, you, you, you know that piece of chicken or that piece of turkey. You know, you got to let that sit in the, in the, in the Italian dressing. The, 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 if you're Hispanic, the saison. You need the, the pepper. You need the garlic. You need the – you got to, you know, put it all together. And, and I think sometimes objectively, and I can speak about this because I live in the Philadelphia area being an alum of Eastern University, I think sometimes y'all do too much. I think sometimes <laughs> you guys are, are alarmist about it. Listen, man, I said what I said. I feel like sometimes you guys can be a, a bit of an alarmist, and, and sometimes you just got to let it play out. I think, you know, we know that Joel Embiid likes to take jumpers from time to time. We know sometimes he likes to play pretty good basketball. Maybe he should play in the post sometimes. That's a that's a Charles Barkley and a Shaq Lament. I know that last year Philadelphia's Lament was, you know, Ben Simmons can't take jumpers, you know, and and I've always used this analogy. People said the same thing about Jason Kidd, and he won a ring on his way out the door uh, with the Dallas Mavericks. I think that when you look at the Sixers, though, um, I remember um, I checked them out during the preseason out in Orlando, and um, I I was surprised at how well they played as a cohesive unit. Um, I, I do think that they overpaid for Al Horford, but I think Al Horford is still a veteran leader that they that they needed um, because you did lose a veteran leader in, in, in J.J. Redick who plays a different position. Uh, I, I do believe that Al Horford is the Joe LMB whisperer, something that was lacking as an inside presence last season. And, you know, I, I think that there are some things that can make this Cornish game hand uh, 
uh, worth serving uh, tomorrow night. Um, and, and I think tomorrow afternoon is the big test against you know the Milwaukee Bucks. But I still do think that there is a, a, a presence that we've needed. You know I've gone on record and said last season that the 76ers and Jamal Crawford did have mutual interest. Um, I, I've also gone on record recently and said that the Milwaukee Bucks and the Toronto Raptors have called Jamal Crawford, and those interests have since gone cold. Um, I think the Sixers are missing shooting. Um, I, I still think that uh, he's somebody that could help them. Um, and I don't know that there'll be anything in the tra- trade value come trade time that is worth, you know, kind of messing up the chemistry and bringing something in. But I do think that um, I'm always right for Jamal. He needs a job in the NBA. Uh, the Sixers should call him. Um, but I've also heard that Elton Brand doesn't necessarily have as much interest as he did last season. So, there's a change there. Um, shooting is at a premium. I do like Josh Richardson on that team. I told him in, uh, after that preseason game in Orlando that I believe he has um, – uh, uh, I envy his spot in Philly because he's the defensive stopper that they need. He's also a complimentary scorer that they need, and I like the damage that he did in Miami, but I still think we're marinating right now. We're not at the finished product, and um, here we are. Scoop, first of all, how you doing, buddy? It's good to talk to you again. I'm maintaining. Good to talk to you on <laughs> on, on the phone and, and on the radio as always. Exactly, my friend. Um, first of all, I agree with a lot that you just said. Obviously, you got to wait until everything kind of is a finished dish and not try to judge it before it's done. Um, this kind of goes back to before the Richardson trade. I always maintain with the Sixers that they need a guard. Uh, not so much Devin Booker. But a, or, or a guy like Zach Levine, a guy that can kind of get his own shot and take the pressure off of Simmons so it's not so paramount that he become this shooter as long along with his playmaking ability so soon. I mean, you still want him to develop that, but it, it's at a dire need right now because Tobias Harris, while he's good, he's not that level of player. Al Horford is a guy that's a veteran leader. We just talked about he's a shooter. And Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid. You don't have that other guard. And I agree with the Jamal Crawford thing even last year and even even more this year uh, because you don't have Markel Fultz who was coming off the bench. And while he wasn't the number one pick, he still was a guy who can create his own shot. You don't have that now. They try to sign Trey Burke, and I love Trey. Don't get me wrong. I love Trey. But he's not that guy that you need to be a starting level caliber two guard and no knock to Josh Richardson, but I just don't believe that he's that level of player to take that pressure off of Ben consistently. Well, I'm I'm gonna stick with the Jamal Crawford because you gave a lot of you gave a lot of context, information, and statement. And what I'll say is, um, you know, a lot of people have made uh, reference to Jamal's age at 39, and you know, I was with Jamal uh, right before the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and he said the thing about his age, people talk about 39. How many people at 39 can do what he does? They call him the ageless wonder for a reason. He actually looks younger now than he did when he first came into the league. Uh, you would think that Jamal and Elton Brand being teammates in Chicago uh, during their Bulls days last decade. Uh, can you believe we're going into 2020, man? It was just no, yesterday, 2000, 2001, they were teammates. But you think that that relationship there uh, would, would spur um, some sort of uh, familiarity and, and, and ability to, to you know, come in and do what he needs to do. But being 39 years old, uh, people look at that and think, oh, maybe he's too old, he's washed. Let's not forget he scored 50 points uh, in his last game last season as a member of the Phoenix Suns uh, and, and kind of, well, actually playing spoiler uh, to Dirk Nowitzki's last game uh, in, in Dallas. Uh, but, you know, they had a, he had another game after that, but his last home game. But I'll, I'll say this, um, Philadelphia does need another volume scorer. Um, I think that Tobias Harris, when you look at his situation, uh, I think it's a consolation prize that they did they did sign him in free agency, but he's not Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy is Jimmy, and Jimmy is living his best life. He ain't got time to answer none of y'all questions because he's doing this <laughs> thing in, in, in Miami right now as a fourth seed. And, I mean, they're a surprise team. I'll tell you that, you know, you look at Kendrick Nunn, who came out of nowhere, done, done well. Uh, you look at Tyler Hero, who's doing well. Um, and, you know, there was talk over the summer after the, you know, the Chris Paul trade. I was in Oklahoma the day that Russell Westbrook, I was with Russell the day he was traded um, to the uh, Houston Rockets, and there was much talk about, 
uh, Miami potentially making a trade. I know this is not a Miami show, so I keep this minimal, but, you know, Miami has turned things around, and Jimmy Butler has been a huge part of that reason, a former Sixer. So you look at Philadelphia, they're missing some things. Defensively, they're missing some things. Josh, Josh Richardson is definitely not Jimmy Butler either, and J.J. Redick and his premium shooting yeah, is missing. He's in New Orleans. Uh, suffering right now. And uh, it's interesting to see this landscape of the NBA now. The Sixers uh, are still a fifth seed, though. Speaking of missing things, a little breaking news here on 97.3 ESPN. You got Brandon Robinson, Scoop B on the board, kind on of hotline. Chris Haynes is reporting that Matisse Thibel is expected to miss two to four weeks with a right knee sprain. There's optimism he could be cleared at the two-week reevaluation date. That's according to Chris Haynes and Yahoo Sports. So, Speaking of missing things, you know, without Matisse Thibel, that's a huge blow on the defensive end, but also the fact that Thibel is a guy who plays very well off of guys like Ben Simmons. So you have to think, Brandon, you know, you know, maybe the Sixers, they accelerate the conversation of maybe trying to acquire somebody to fill the void on the roster in terms of not just scoring, not just a three-point shot, but also another athlete on the perimeter. Oh, for sure. And I, I, to be honest with you, um, I, I, just to break it down a little bit, Matisse is an awesome player out in college. He 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 was a conference leader. I spent some time with Matisse uh, in L.A. in September. Um, and one thing aside from basketball uh, that I liked that may actually cross over into basketball was his attention to detail. Uh, I spent some time with him uh, in Los Angeles at a NBA 2K party, and he was a photographer. And in between him taking photos of people on the red carpet, he himself, um, you know, just talked about his talked about knowledge of basketball. We, him being a Sixer, we talked a lot about Allen Iverson. And I raised this question to him. I said to him, with Russell Westbrook being gone in Oklahoma, would you cons- would you say that Russell Westbrook is to Oklahoma City? what Allen Iverson is. Is it comparable that Russell is to Oklahoma City what Allen Iverson was or is to Philadelphia? And he just spoke reverently about Allen Iverson at large. It was more of an open-ended question. It wasn't a comparison. Of course, Allen was what he was to Philly, but sure. um, he had just a great respect for Allen and what he brought to the city for years and the impact that he has not just on the city of Philadelphia but NBA culture at large. Uh, when you look at the overall landscape of the NBA, uh, there are a lot of free agents still available. You do have guys like Josh, uh, excuse me, J.R. Smith that are, that are available. You have guys like, um, you have Joe Kim Noah, uh, who, who who was still available, uh, who was more of an uh, interior presence. Uh, he's told me, um, you know, this summer that he wants to find a contender, a team that, you know, can really use his services and he can be an asset to uh, a former Chicago Bull uh, like Elton Brand, wink, wink. But Jamal Crawford is somebody that I'm still lobbying for. And I think he would be a natural fit um, in in Philadelphia. And we'll see what happens. Scoop, you knew we weren't going to go through this interview without me talking about the New York Knicks. And what in the world is going on in New York? They fired David Fisdale. For reasons that, okay, you can make uh, a conversation for, but they knew this team wasn't going to contend. What is the future for the Knicks? Because as long as I lived, they have not been relevant in any sense or word. Uh, Who's going to be the next head coach next season? Obviously, they got to interim. But what the hell is going to go on? Because this team has no direction. They have no leadership. And it's embarrassing because the NBA, in my opinion, is still not complete until the New York Knicks at least become a good, viable basketball option. Not even a team, just an option for people to want to go to. For sure. I mean, a 7-24 and team, they legitimately could have won that game last night against a 9-20 and Washington Wizards team. Uh, the Knicks did lose 121-115 to on Monday night. Uh, to directly answer your question, um, it's a very – it's a question that everybody is asking. Um, what will the Knicks do? Uh, many people are saying Jason Kidd uh, could be the head coach. I can tell you uh, I, I've spoken to uh, several league sources uh, in the New York area as well as in Los Angeles, and uh, I'm told that Kidd doesn't have interest at this time. I mean, why would he? He and the Lakers are chasing a championship. 
Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens as far as just the Lakers at large and what happens with their season. He was brought in as a lead assistant under Frank Vogel in, in Los Angeles. And, you know, Mark Jackson is a name that the Knicks are, are, are interested in. But uh, I spoke to sources close to Mark Jackson who have said to me, um, we've gone down this road before. You know, Mark was a candidate before uh, David Fisdale ended up getting the job. I, I'll tell you a story. I was literally on the phone with somebody uh, when – out like a few hours, I was on my way to Chicago. I was having a full blown conversation with somebody that, that knows Mark and, and and is in contact with Mark. I said, "Man, they need to get Mark this job, but I bet you they give it to Fisdale." Atlanta, Chicago, breaking news: the Knicks signed David Fisdale. Uh, it, it's one of those things that, and, and that same person has said to me, "We've gone down this road before," and a lot of the reason why Mark has had has had difficulty finding a job is because of the reputation um, that has been created about him during his time uh, with the with the Golden State Warriors uh, while he was head coach. There are people within that organization that he still to this day um, has tried to repair that relationship, and he doesn't have the best relationship. And I'm hoping that in the next decade he can find greener pastures. I don't know that the New York Knicks is the team to kind of repair that. But I have there have been people who have said he has a history of repairing uh, situations. What coach do you know went in, had a team that was in the doldrums, and came out fighting? Um, you look at the Warriors, he did that. He was in the process. He, he he was part of the team that brought in Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Grant, and what have you. And then he basically prepared them for better or for worse, Steve Kerr. I now believe Steve Kerr knows what it's like to be Mark Jackson. Um, in the sense of people aren't singing his praises right now. What do you do? So I look at Mark Jackson. He's a guy that would fit in New York, but would Mark Jackson want that job? That's the bigger question. It's hard to be to work in a place where you grew up. New York City, that's where he's from. But what if it doesn't work? You're the butt of jokes. Same thing with Kenny Smith. He's from there. Do you want to take that job? And then hypothetically, if it doesn't work, you have to live with that. That's a tough call there. Follow him on Twitter at Scoopy. Brandon Robinson, our underground NBA insider, gets all kinds of great scoops. You want to follow him on Twitter at Scoopy. Brandon, we appreciate you joining us here on the holiday eve. Hope you have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Merry Christmas, my friend. Brother, you know, I got to say before I leave, thank you for allowing me to be myself. Always. Always, man. Yes, sir. I'll talk to you all soon.